just a quick advert for Octopus. I say we've got an energy company, but primarily that was born out of our investment company. We're the largest provider of VISs, uh, sorry, largest provider of VCT investments in the UK, and we've got over 43,000 investors. We're probably at a different scale in Praetoria, we're perhaps more specialist and bespoke, but there's place for both of us in the marketplace. Um, why VCTs? VCTs, the one thing our, our industry is peppered with is three letter and acronyms. You've already started with BPR, AIM, EIS, VCT, RIP, because you're probably sick to death of listening to them. Um, VCT stands for Venture Capital Trust. So let's have a look at what a Venture Capital Trust is and why we think this could be the right investment at this present moment in time for you as clients, or I appreciate that some of us in here are introducers to Acumen, so for your clients as well. We mentioned before about tax. Um, yeah, you're right, the tax tail shouldn't wag the investment dog, and it's massively important to make sure you've got the right investments underneath it. But does anybody in this room like paying tax? Thank God for that, I'm in the right room. Right, the reason being is, at this present moment in time, there are challenges to us right, left, and center. We've had pension allowances frozen for the next five years, and we've also got inheritance tax allowances frozen for the next five years. So by nature of asset growth and people getting, hopefully, pay increases because of inflation, more and more people are gonna fall into the gambit of paying this higher level of tax. Many of you will be challenged by annual allowance issues for pensions about how much you can actually pay into a pension. Some of you will be challenged by how much your pension has grown to because there is a ceiling on what your pension can allow to grow to before you start paying excess tax charges. There's been changes to dividend legislation. There's been tax rises in that front over the last few weeks. We've also got tougher rules imposed on landlords. Some of you for a job may well be property developers and may, may run your own buy-select portfolios. And then we've just got people that have done particularly well. Because although COVID has been a bit of a downer for certain sectors of the economy, other sectors have never made so much money. And we've been quite surprised at how much and how robust the support has been for VCTs and other areas of our investments, the same way Dave has with Praetora. You know, we've been quite staggered about how much money has actually been coming into our business, even though COVID probably should have affected most of the market, but it has only in certain areas. Um, is that in focus for you, by the way, guys? Can you see those slides all right? All right, well, I'll go over them. Um, high earners and high rate taxpayers. So why is it that we're looking at VCTs? These are becoming very much the thinking man's alternative to pension arrangements. And we'll have a look at pensions, because ordinarily, if I was saving for my retirement, I would definitely go to a pension in the first instance. But what I would like you to see VCTs as is a potential complement to pension funding and the way you can retire and to build in extra levels of flexibility. I've already mentioned that there's people who probably Sorry, let's go back to that. There are people who might be in danger of reaching the pension al a lifetime allowance. That currently stands at just over a million pounds. You've got people that uh, might well be GPs or dentists that are obviously part of the NHS pension scheme, but may also benefit from private practice earnings. We've mentioned about the restrictions on landlords. They've changed the tax relief that you can get on offsetting your expenses. At one point, it was at the rate that you paid tax, but now it's just down at basic rate tax. You might also be of the, of have the benefit of having excess cash on your balance sheet, because I know some of you are business owners. So we'll have a look at what we potentially could do with that. And business owners in general about how you mix your salary dividend combination for how you extract money from your business. Now a quick visit to what a VCT actually does and what it is. It's an investment that you could actually in any one year put up to 200,000 pounds in if you had sufficient tax liability to justify that level of investment. Bear in mind the starting investment can be anything from 3,000 upwards. So please don't be thinking, switch off and go, I haven't got 200,000 pounds to put in here. The average investment that comes into VCTs across the UK is about 35,000 pounds. You get 30% income tax relief on an investment into a VCT. But let's get this right, it's not relief in, in, in the truest sense, it's all about reclaiming income tax. If I had £100,000 to spare, I potentially could get 
a tax certificate to reclaim £30,000 worth of income tax. But if I only paid 10000 it doesn't make any sense in putting 100000 in. You can only reclaim back what income tax you've paid in the year you make the contribution. And that's income tax from any source. Because we mentioned pensions, and to fund a pension, you have to have what they refer to as pensionable earnings. But if you've got investment income, if you've got um, buy-to-let income, obviously that's not pensionable. So how do you go about getting that income tax back? The answer is an investment into an EIS or a VCT, because you can reclaim income tax from whichever source it's generated. Daniel mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that you'd look to EISs as high growth vehicles and you'd probably look towards VCTs as income vehicles. Yeah, there's a good reason for that because the profit that we make within VCTs can be distributed as tax-free dividends. Now, as individuals, we have a £2,000 a year tax allowance or tax-free allowance for dividends. But this is on top of that. So if you've built up a decent-sized VCT pot, this could be a real supplement to income, particularly in retirement and you'll get tax-free growth. So it's not just tax-free from income tax for dividend purposes, but also capital gains tax-free on the growth. We mentioned before about EIS as being specific investments into individual companies. This is a different concept because this is an investment into a pooled scenario. We're looking at a VCT that in the case of Octopus, we run four VCTs, and one of them is the largest in the UK. It's £1.3 billion in size and invests in around about 150 different businesses. But those businesses are all at different stages of their development. And as a pooled investment, you will actually see the benefit of the evening out of return. So you won't necessarily experience any losses on individual stocks, but similarly, you won't experience the highs as you might do if you held those stocks individually, as you potentially could get from an EIS. So a pooled investment with businesses of many, many different sizes. And we will go back in and visit those businesses and put more money into them as we see them develop. Some we will stop funding because we don't think they can go any further, and there will be losses within the portfolio, which will affect the actual share price of the VCT. Some businesses we think we're going to fly, and we will put more money into them. That's the decision that we make. Um, if you look at where Octopus invests, we are the largest investor of VCTs in the UK, and contrary to popular belief, the UK is actually a brilliant place to start a business up. We always think about the fact we're outside Europe now, is that going to affect us much? Second, probably only, for, particularly for tech businesses, the US, you'd actually come to the UK as a centre of European excellence. And a lot of the leanings that we have for the underlying investments are in the tech sector. But investing in them is one thing. Exiting your business is where you will make the profit. And we sit at quite a big table because we have offices in... Uh, Singapore, Shanghai, San Francisco, and New York. So we take the wares of the businesses that we invest in into a, a quite a large global audience. We've exited to Microsoft, Unilever, Nestle. You've had exits to Amazon, Google, um, Snapchat, Etsy. Big global brands, we've been able to take the wares of our VCT companies to make exits, to generate profits for the VCT to help pay the dividends out and also hopefully to see capital growth. What I'd like to do, well, I'll tell you what, before I move on, are there any questions about the structure of a VCT and how it works, or is that reasonably sensibly explained? Okay, nods around that room, room, that's great. Uh, VCT planning scenarios. This is where I'd like to sort of put some meat on the bones about where I see that you or your clients could use a VCT. And we're going to run through some case studies and hopefully some lights will go on and say, oh, yeah, that's actually me. Or I recognise that client that could benefit from this particular type of planning. Well, have a look at John Smith. He looks a bit smug, doesn't he? Well, he should do. He's got a big salary. If you look at John, he's known as the director of his own business, and his earnings exceed £315,000 in a year. So, not bad. Now, the problem for John is we mentioned about pensions and the limitations and what you can put in and what pension funds can grow to. Now, the issue for John is once you start earning over £240,000 a year, and that's from all sources, the normal £40,000 maximum pension contribution you make 
will be tapered away. So for every two pounds over, you lose one pound of that funding. So much so that once you've gone through 312,000 pounds, you actually can only pay in 4,000 pounds into a pension. So although I mentioned before, you can have a pension maximum uh, growth of your, of your fund up to just over, it's one point, it's one billion and 73,000 pounds. He's never gonna get there if you can only put 4,000 pounds into a pension. So where's poor old John? I say poor old John, my heart bleeds for him. Um, where's poor old John gonna go to get some form of retirement income? The answer is the use of a VCT because pension contributions are gonna be limited as to what he can pay in. Yes, he should maximize his other tax-free allowances. He should max out on his ISAs. But the problem with an ISA is you can only put into an ISA 20,000 pounds and there is no tax assistance up front on that investment. Key thing is though, there are no restrictions on how long you have to hold that investment for, but there's no cap on how much you can grow to either. Now, you've got your pension in the middle, and yes, you can have a pension fund just over a million pounds, but you can't access it till you're 55, and that's gonna go and get further away. I see there are some faces of a similar age to myself, but also there are some younger ones in the audience, and there is a link between the, the access to the state pension age of 10 years before that as to how you can access your pension. So when it goes to age 67 for the state pension, it will go to 57 before you can access your personal pension. Now, for me, I can only see that moving further and further away for the youngsters around us. You might even find at one point in time that you know, state pensions might not kick in until the age of 70 or 75. I'm sorry to depress you, by the way, in some of these tales. Um, but that will then mean that you couldn't access your pension until maybe 65, your personal pension, let alone your state pension. So if that's the case and you want to set in your mind an early, early retirement strategy, how are you going to facilitate it? The answer is by potentially an investment that you actually only have to hold for five years before you can access it. It's not age-related. It's just a five-year holding period. You can put in up to £200,000, which is 10 times more than you can put into an ISA. It will give you tax-free growth and dividends, the same as an ISA. It will be at a much higher level of risk, and risk is something you must discuss with your advisor. As Daniel said about the barbell strategy, it's all about the balance, about what you want and how much risk you're prepared to take. But there's always place for higher risk investments, even if you are a lower risk investor, it's just the proportions you put into them. So you've got a five year window to hold a VCT for, you can put 10 times more in than an ISA, and you're gonna get tax free growth and dividends. At Octopus, the VCTs that we, that we invest in, we target a 5% dividend yield each year. It's not delivered monthly, it'll be paid out half yearly, but it's a 5% targeted uh, tax-free income, which is why it could potentially complement anything you're doing with your pensions. Because what is it ultimately that you would like from a pension? Income? We can provide it. Pensions are brilliant and they would always be my first port of call for my retirement planning, and indeed they are. But importantly, the basics of pensions haven't changed for many a year, in that you can only access 25% of it as tax-free cash. Any extraction of income thereafter is going to be at your own marginal rate. With a VCT or an EIS, once it's gone through its qualifying periods, once it's been held, it's completely tax-free cash if you want it to be. And there are no caps on how much these potential pots can grow to, unlike there is with a pension. So we're not trying to stick the boot in on pensions, but what we're trying to say is that there's other alternative funding methods for you to get your retirement plans put in place. Let's have a look at Sarah. She looks smug as well, doesn't she? Well, she should do, because she's making a lot of money as well. Now, Sarah, uh, she's obviously a, a business owner. She's receiving £100,000 in salary. Now, that could be salary and dividend combination, because if you run your own business, you're not likely to take it all as salary, are you? It's probably going to be a smaller salary and a larger dividend. She's a 40% taxpayer. Well, her business is building up excess cash. So what is it we can do with that excess cash? Well, the answer is yes, we could fund a pension, but we could also, as an alternative, maybe think a little bit outside the box. She hates paying tax. Who enjoys it? I don't know. 
Um, but this excess cash also could create a problem for her business because excess cash on a balance sheet isn't necessarily as bright as it could be for us as individuals holding excess cash. The reason being is, well, number one, very, very poor returns from cash on deposit for businesses. I don't know if any of you are experiencing that yourselves. We even recently experienced negative interest rates for some companies holding excess cash. So the banks were actually charging the business for the privilege of keeping the cash in the bank with them. But excess cash can be what's known as an accepted asset. And basically what that could ultimately do is change the structure of your business so that it's no longer a trading business, but it becomes an investment business, which has some serious tax implications on exit. Also, if you've got a trading business and you were to die holding the shares, ordinarily you would benefit from something referred to earlier as business property relief. And as long as you've held the shares in the business for more than two years and at date of death, the shares in that business are inheritance tax exempt. But the cash that's in there, if it's not been set aside for an identifiable future purpose, it could be classed as what they refer to as an accepted asset. And that cash, you could still pay inheritance tax on it. So Sarah's got a problem. She's got a business that's building up excess cash, and yet she doesn't want to pay any tax on getting the money out of it. So what solution could an advisor come up with? Well, let's have a look. The answer is you could pay a special dividend. And the suggestion in this instance was to take a special dividend of an extra 50,000 pounds to make sure that she didn't go into additional rate tax. So we've got a 50,000 pound dividend as a special that's paid out on a gross basis with the tax being payable at her next self-assessment event. So, the tax on dividends now, because it's recently gone up, at that level as a higher rate taxpayer, is 33.75%. Now, that's going to result in a tax charge of just shy of £17,000. So she's going to end up with £33,000 net. But a way of getting that tax back would be to invest it into a VCT. And what we could do with that VCT is by investing, it in a, in a, by investing the 50,000 into a VCT, it will generate a 30% tax credit, i.e. a tax credit to reclaim back 15,000 pounds of the tax payable. So although she's paying 16,875, with the, redu with the re tax reducer of 15,000 pounds, the actual result of taxation it's just £1,875, 3.75%. Now, these examples don't take into account charges. And the one thing that you must be aware of is once you start taking income over £100,000, it does affect your own personal allowance because you're allowed to earn just over £12,500 tax-free before you pay basic rate tax. But again, similar to the way pensions work and the tapering off, your personal allowance is tapered away once you earn over £100,000. So there is an implication on this, but you will need to talk it through. But she's now extracted £50,000 out of her business, and she's effectively paid just under £2,000 tax. I don't think she's going to mind too much about that for a woman that hates paying tax. But the secret is you don't do it once. You continue to do it. And why do you continue to do it? Because after a five-year window, VCTs are what we refer to as recyclable. And you can exit a VCT and put the money back in again and get your tax relief repeated. So for this lady to take her £50,000 out, over the next five years, she could build up a VCT pot of around about £250,000 which based on the way we target dividend returns would generate an extra £12,500 tax-free income for her. But the key thing here is in year six, because the VCT she did in year one could be recycled out and reinvested and get the tax relief all over again. Now, what that means for her in year six is whereas in the first five years she's had to take the money out and invest in VCTs, now in year six she takes the £50,000 out of her business but she can put it in her pocket if she wishes to because the VCT from year one is going to give her a tax credit all over again. So she doesn't have to invest in a new VCT unless she wants to and sees it as a, as a, as a growth opportunity. She can actually use that cash to do other things. 
So it's a way of tax efficiently extracting profit out of your business or your clients' businesses. Now, we mentioned earlier about business property relief um, and inheritance tax. Now, inheritance tax is a very, very pernicious tax. The tax, the last calculation we've got, or the last uh, figures we've got for inheritance tax was for the year 19 and 2019, 2020, and it was 6.2 billion pounds of inheritance tax was paid. Now that doesn't tell the tale. That means that in that one year, best part of 15 and a half billion pounds worth of assets had no planning upon them because inheritance tax is very much a voluntary tax. You can avoid it if you take sensible steps. And you can avoid it legally, by the way. You don't have to hide it under the bed. So we'll have a look at inheritance tax now for Walter, who's finally decided he wants to retire and has sold his business. And he sold his business for three million pounds. Now you might be thinking these are exaggerated figures, but believe me, over the last few years, there's been an awful lot of acquisition activity in the UK, and there are some substantial amounts of money being released out into the general economy. So this figure isn't unusual for the type of things that we come across. So Walsh has now sold the shares in his business. Now this was a trading business. So if he'd have died holding the shares in this business, it would have been exempt from inheritance tax. But the moment he sells his shares, and exchanges those shares for cash, and he goes and puts them in the Halifax Building Society, he's also putting that money in his estate as well. So we now have an IHT problem, and despite the fact he's in good health and wants to enjoy the proceeds of the sale, he is a realist, and he recognises at the age of 70, you know, this is a one-way ticket, we're not here forever, and you're not here to read your own obituary. So when does death come? So you need to plan for it. So the use of VCTs has been great for planning your exit out of the business, but now we've got that exit, what can we do with the sale proceeds? And what must we be mindful of when we're looking at putting this money now into your estate? But the important thing is there is a way to avoid that, and that's by using a business property relief qualifying investment. Because the type of investments that we run at Octopus and also at Praetora give you the ability to be able to invest in different types of environments. Daniel mentioned about low volatility models that we have. We have a number of investments that may suit. But by investing in a BPR qualifying investment within three years of the date of the sale of your business, you effectively recapture the relief that you had before. You pick it up where you left off. So the investment immediately goes outside your estate. No new two-year window, it's immediately outside the estate. And these BPR qualifying investments have a number of other advantages. One being that this is just an investment in your own name. It's inheritance tax-free immediately if it's come from, a, from the sale of a business. But importantly, when you die, those assets can be passed down to your children and can also be immediately inheritance tax efficient in their hands as well. So these investments aren't just for one generation. These are multi-generational investments. Just a quick introduction to inheritance tax. I mean, let's be honest, if we're all still alive and kicking here. And in some respects, inheritance tax isn't our problem, is it? Because I'm not going to be writing the cheque when I die. It's going to be down to my kids. But quick introduction to inheritance tax. As it was said here by Roy, Roy Jenkins, former Labour, Labour Chancellor back in 1986, Inheritance tax is, broadly speaking, a voluntary tax. And it genuinely is. There are so many ways in which you can mitigate inheritance tax. As, in, as we said here, 6.2 billion pounds worth of IHT paid. Oh, wrong year. 2021, 2022. But that's only going to go up. The allowances have been frozen for another five years. They were originally frozen in 2009-10 tax year. So by the time they go to revisit the standard allowance for inheritance tax, which is £325,000 as a null rate band, it will be the same allowance for 17 years. And anybody in the UK, I'm trying to think about Rishi Sunak's wife, but we won't go into that case study because that could get a bit complicated. So ignore non-DOM status. Everybody in the UK is, generally speaking, needs to pay inheritance tax on death if their assets exceed £325,000, and you individually have that allowance. 
Importantly, anything over and above that is subject to a 40% tax charge. But it's transferable between spouses. So if there's a husband and wife, you actually have 650,000 pounds worth of allowances before you'd actually have to worry about paying any tax. But there's more. You've also got an additional allowance, which was introduced back in 2017, called the Residence Null Rate Band. Now, you will definitely need to speak to your financial advisor about this, because this, although it looks quite simple on the surface, is peppered. It's like a minefield. There are so many different caveats as to how you qualify for the Residence Null Rate Band. But this is an additional £175,000 that is available I'll come back onto business property for a minute. There's available to offset against your main residence. So not against your commercial properties, not against your buy selects, not against your holiday home in France, but your main residence. And it's an additional £175,000. Now that means now as an individual, husband and wife, if your house is worth at least £350,000, you've got combined allowances of a million pounds before you pay inheritance tax. Now, that's a generous allowance, but some people are going to be caught by this. Now, business property relief is a type of investment that both our offices will offer you. And this type of investment, or the concept behind it for the tax break, has been around since 1976. So whatever we're talking about here, by the way, I don't want you to think that you're going to the cutting edge of tax planning. EISs have been around for 26 years. VCTs have been around for 25 years. Business property relief has been around since 1976. So this isn't cutting edge tax planning. This is just tax planning that maybe you weren't aware of until you get, had the chance to speak to a quality financial advisor firm. At Octopus, we offer two solutions for, for uh, BPR qualifying investments. We can either offer you a growth opportunity, which is a portfolio of AIM listed shares. So the alternative investment market I don't know about you, I hate using the terminology alternative investment market. This is a brilliant market for smaller companies. Alternative to me always smacks of something that's substandard. If you go to an alternative comedy club, you know you're not going to laugh. If you go for an alternative dining experience, you're probably going to eat your dinner off the back of a postage stamp and eat a kebab on the way home. Alternative sounds substandard. But the alternative investment market, believe me, is not. And we run a portfolio of anything between 25 and 30 businesses that are all business property leave qualifying. And as long as you've held them for more than two years and at date of death, they are accessible for income purposes, capital purposes, ad hoc withdrawals. We also run another business called Fern Trading, which is an unquoted solution. Now, many of you will run your own unquoted businesses, and I believe that about 90% of the UK is employed within the unquoted structure businesses. Because when you think about it, we think of big businesses such as businesses on the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250. Well, the clue's in the name. There's only 100 businesses on that, and there's only 250 on the 250. So where the hell does everybody else get employed? The answer is in unquoted structures. Octopus is an unquoted business. Acumen are an unquoted business. And this structure targets a relatively modest 3 to 4% return each year, mainly from asset-backed lending, green energy solutions, which is where our energy company has been born out of, and uh, healthcare provision. And we've also gone recently into fibre optic broadband networks. So these are just common sense investments. Nothing sexy about them. Unfortunately, in the investment world, common sense isn't that common, but we believe that this is. So who could benefit from uh, business property leave qualifying investments? Well, anybody with an inheritance tax liability, but people that just want to retain the flexibility of being able to control their own assets. If any of you are acting as power of attorney for any relatives that have lost mental capacity, then you can actually use business property leave qualifying investments to solve a problem on the, on, the, on the donor of the power of attorney's estate. You can also use it for people who are in poor health. So if you've got elderly relatives and you're thinking, it's probably too late to do anything about this. This is just a two-year window. And if it's a husband and wife, the allowance is transferable between the two of them. So let's say if it was me and my wife, and I'd taken a business property leave qualifying investment out, 
and I predeceased her, and she has told me that she will outlive me for spice, if nothing else. So we will always use the example of me dying first. So I die first after 18 months. Those investments can be transferred into my wife's name, and providing she survives the remaining six months, you've got your two-year qualifying window. So age is no barrier to wanting to invest in business property relief. That's my section over. Do we have any questions about either VCTs, business property with qualifying investments, or just any general taxation bits and pieces around IHT or income tax? <laughs>